about one and a half years ago, uh, my youngest son was born. And soon after he was born, we needed to buy some supplies and some bits and pieces. And the missus said, we need to go to mother care. Uh, we didn't have a mother care near us for many, many miles. It was a long old trip out to go <laughs> out to this store. When we got there, it was a very big store. I won't say which one it was, but it was a very, very big mother care store. We went in there. It was a Saturday prime shopping time. Everyone was out and about as well. You know, this is a couple of years ago now, or a year and a half ago. And inside, there was no other person. There was one member of staff and no customers whatsoever in this whole store. And it just felt like a ghost town. Uh, and looking at the prices, I'd got my phone out. And I'm looking at the prices of certain things and comparing them to what I can get them for on Amazon, like most people do. And these prices were 200, 300% higher than what I could get them online. And they were the exact same products, if not inferior products at times. And it made me think to myself, what's going on here? This is not a company that looks like it's thriving. This does not look like a strong business uh, and a company that's particularly doing well. No one is coming here. No one is coming into these stores. They are dead at, at prime shopping time. No one is coming in. And it made me realize many people are going to Amazon for their products, for their baby stuff, for their maternity stuff, which is essentially what this company, Mother Care, do. Um, however, having them run my analysis, I am not surprised at what we're about to see in this episode. <laughs> Hey there guys, welcome to episode 46 of the FTSE show with me, Chris Chillingworth. Hope you are doing well. Um, every now and again, we get these comments on, on some of these videos where they say something along the lines of, why don't you just do a video on the companies that hit the top 100 points? Why do you bother putting out videos of companies that aren't going to make your grade? And the reason why we do that, or the reason why I do that, one is because I want to show the spectrum. I want to show the bad and the good on this show. But two, to really appreciate the good, you need to understand the bad. You need to truly understand why a company is doing so well and what constitutes a, a, a great year for a company or a great 10 years or great trends in the numbers. You need to understand what's bad. You need a benchmark, right? And to truly be able to have the confidence in a company, you really need to understand the spectrum as well. Because if you're going to invest in a company when the price plummets, if you're going to be buying more when the price falls, that's how some investors can do that. They, it's because they have the confidence in those companies. They know what they're investing in. They've done their research and they are confident that this is a business that's going to do well no matter what. And when the prices fall, they see that as an opportunity to buy great company shares at cheap prices. And so they dive in without hesitation. But to be able to get there, to be able to have that confidence in that company, you need to understand how they fare against their competitors, how the spectrum looks, how the index looks, how all the companies in that index perform. You need to know that what you're looking at is extraordinary compared to everything else that's out there. And you can only do that if you look at the bad, the kind of mediocre, the up and coming and the fantastic. You need to look at all those different companies to truly get a benchmark of where these different companies sit each time you analyze them. Today is not an episode for those that want to just see the top 100. If you're one of those people that skips to the very end of the video just to see the number and then decides whether or not to invest or not on their own portfolios based on the number alone, this is not the episode for you. We are going to look at a company called Mothercare PLC. They are not doing well. Okay, then, guys, let's take a look at Mothercare PLC then. Epic code MTC. These guys are in the FTSE Fledgling Index. And again, these guys are in the retail sector, of course. So looking at revenue from 2008 up to 2012, these guys were going everything in the right direction in terms of revenue from 676 million to 723, then 766, 793, then they breached 800 million, made 812 million in 2012. And from that period of time, 2008 to 2012, things were looking great. Revenue was going up, they were finding more ways to bring money into the business every year, and there was obvious growth there in terms of the money that was being brought into the business 
excellent. Unfortunately, and you can probably tell where this is going from uh, the tone of my voice, but uh, we've seen it all completely go downhill since 2012. 2013, we saw a drop off of over 50 million in revenue. Then we've gone down to 724, then 713, then 682, then 667, down to 580, now down to 513 as of 2019. So we've fallen all the way from 812 to 513. That's a drop of 300 million in revenue each year uh, over a course of eight years. So it's been a slow and steady decline. It's not like it's been a cliff edge or anything, but it has been a decline quite a significant decline we're now making at Mothercare we're making less money than we were making pre-2008 quite considerably less uh, in fact we reached that point in 2017 and we've continued to fall in 2018 and 2019 so they're making less revenue than they have done in the last 15 years maybe more and it's only been in the eight, last eight years where that's dramatically fallen from the peak that they saw in 2012. So that is not good. That is revenue going down and really going down. You cannot miss that trend. That is obvious. Uh, and this is the kind of warning signs. I don't necessarily want to be predicting, uh, you know, the outcomes of companies' futures and stuff like that. But this is very similar to the numbers that we saw in terms of like Thomas Cook and companies like that. Uh, it was ongoing and it, it, it dragged on for a long time. We saw Thomas Cook come in from 2010 onwards uh, with de declining revenues every single year and uh, then it just sped up right at the end there. Um, but yeah, I would be concerned. I would definitely not be an investor in a company that's declining uh, revenue for this period of time over and over again every year. I mean, we wait to see 2020's results. What do you expect that's going to look like? I'm sure that's going to be worse as well. So you're just going to add another year of decline onto that as well. Uh, not good. Looking at the company's margin is even more frightening for me. Uh, we can see that in 2009, the gross margin was 12%. So that is a uh, gross profit of 86 million. Okay. Then the next year it fell to 11%. This is the slice of the pie that mother get care get to keep of the revenue after cost of sales. Okay. So and cost of sales isn't necessarily cost of sales isn't the expenses of running the business. It's not the staff, it's the products. What are they selling? How much does it cost them to get those products in to then make the revenue, right? So 12% in 2009, down to 11% the slice of the pie in 2010, down to 7% in 2011 and 2013. Then we've seen it fall to 4% in 2014, but then back up to 8 9%. 2018, down to 2%. And in 2019, 3%. So they're now down to a point where they're making a gross profit of 18.3 million. That is a substantial drop off over the last 10 years. From 2009's 87 million. 87 million down to 18 million over the last 10 years. Uh, and that is a slow but steady decline in profits made by this business, which is doesn't bode well. And these guys are making 3% gross margin. So let's get on to the expenses of running this business because unfortunately, as of 2019, that sat at 420% of the company's gross profit <laughs> so the, co the gross profit for 2019 was 18 million but it's cost them 77 million to run the business in terms of the expenses and unfortunately the warning signs have been here since 2012 uh, in 2012 well in fact you could argue 2011 because in 2011 the expenses which were sitting quite comfortably at about 60 percent of the gross profit jumped up to 80% in 2011 then they jumped up to 116% in 2012 and they've been up there so there have been years where they've managed to drop it down to sort of 70% in, in the interim but we've had these little spike years where we've jumped up to 125% we've been back up to 85% in 2018 892% I mean, that's just crazy. So they made 11 million in gross profit, but they spent 101 million on expenses. What it basically means is that the expenses are far too high for the company in terms of the gross profit that this business is making, which is quickly diminishing down to, you know, 2 3% now from highs of 12%. Uh, the expenses are rising and they're rising significantly. And this is a recipe for disaster, right? You've got declining revenues. 
you've got cost of sales eating up more and more of that revenue so that the slice of the pie, the gross profit, is falling dramatically down to just a 3% slice of the cake from a 12% slice of the cake they were getting before. Not only that, but expenses are rising dramatically. Uh, this is not a recipe for success. Uh, and we can see in the interest on debt has been rising as well. Over the last 10 years, we've seen the interest on debt rise from uh, 700,000 to 8 million over the last 10 years. So that's going to eat into profits as well. And when we come down to the true net earnings by the business, extracting the extraneous uh, sales of assets and other things like that or profit from assets that all gets taken out we just want to look at the everyday recurring revenue of the business the everyday recurring uh, profits that the business is making from their regular day-to-day -day business mother care have been prior to 2012 were trundling along at about three to four percent net earnings a year so they were always riding on a very very thin margin they really weren't making much money from the 766 million that they made in 2010 they only kept 23 million of that three percent then in 2011 down to one percent 2012 down to 0.5 percent so 2012 was the peak of the revenue coming in but in that year they only made they brought in 812 million in revenue but they kept three million by the end of it that's all they kept as profit for the shareholders so they had to bring in 812 million revenue just to make 3 million. That's a very, very inefficient business. And the net earnings was 0.5%, which is poor. Uh, in 2013, you're looking at 0.9. In 2014, unfortunately, it just got too much for them. They lost minus 2.2% or minus 16 million for shareholders. So they lost money in 2014. In 2015, 2016, and 2017, we're sitting at about 1% one and a half percent every year so again really really thin margins I mean these margins are thinner than the likes of Tesco uh, and then we come down to 2018 where they lost 16% 2019 they've lost 13% they are hemorrhaging money in 2018 they lost 93 million for their shareholders last year they lost 63 million for their shareholders if you were to highlight all of those years going from 2008 to 2019 and you added together the true net earnings of the business you would find that on average they've been losing about 4.6 million a year for their shareholders it's a total of 55 million down over the last uh, it's actually 12 years that we just highlighted there so over the last 12, 12 years they've not made any money they've lost more than they've made for shareholders and so that is a recipe for disaster I'm expecting to see bad things happen to their share price and I'm genuinely concerned about the future of mother care I, I honestly am and ha having gone there uh, a year and a half ago now and my newborn entered this world uh, I remember walking around that store and just looking at the prices which were probably three times more than the likes of Amazon and I just thought it was literally we were the only customers in the entire store uh, it was a big big store as well and the prices were just crazy level and no one else it was just it wasn't buzzing at all uh, and I just got a sense of this is a company that's potentially dying here and the numbers reflect that for sure we're seeing massively declining revenues which is a big concern looking at the balance sheet we're looking at the current ratio it's fallen from 1.5 down to 1 now 1 is still a relatively healthy figure it means that the uh, total current liabilities matches the total current assets um, so I mean that's still relatively healthy but there has been an obvious decline over the last five years we've seen it drop from 1.5 to 1.4 to 1.3 to 1.1 to 1 a ratio of 1 so they basically match each other um, property plant and equipment has been falling dramatically so they've obviously been losing quite a lot of assets and when we look at the actual assets themselves we can see here that uh, their kind of peak was 2010 they were sitting on 410 million worth of assets now only 175 million so they've lost a lot of the value there as well and we can see if we come out down to the debt levels they're sitting on 11.7 million in long-term debt add to that the short-term debt of 11.5 million so we're looking at 22 million not a major concern for me at that level had they been making a profit but this is a company that has lost 55 million over the last 12 years and they've got outstanding debt of 22 million so that's a concern for me you know I'd, I'd rather see that they don't have any outstanding debt I mean it's not 
it's not crippling levels, but it's still a fair amount of money, and this is a company not making a profit over the last two years. So how are they going to pay that off is my concern. Um, coming down to the retained earnings, minus 223 million. Uh, in 2011, they were up 100 million, but every year we just seen this retained earnings decline and decline and decline. Now down to minus 223 million. That is a big concern for me as well. And when we look at the equity of the business, back in 2011, sitting at 192 million in equity, that's assets minus liabilities equals the book value or the equity of the business. 192 million in 2019 minus 49 million so the equity there are negative equity here at mother care big big concern for me and with that i think i've painted a pretty damaging and poor picture of mother care let's go and take a look at the chart okay so we're looking at a monthly chart then of mother care this is uh dated from 2010 to present day as you can see it is pretty obvious that the share price reflects the financials with the decline in financials and all the concerns that are quite evident in those numbers we are seeing a decline in share price and it's been pretty brutal to be honest if we look at 2010 we're sitting at a price of about five pound 60 coming on five pound 80 in january 2010 per share for mother care today seven pence and that's got nothing to do with the events of 2020 because in January 2020, this company was sitting at 17 pence. So we're really not seeing a significant decline. The decline was already happening. This is a company trading now at 7 pence a share. That's terrible. That's very, very low. And if we're looking at those numbers, you know, I can absolutely understand why nobody is investing in this company right now. No one is interested in these shares. The shares are, you know, there's no demand plenty of supply share price therefore has had to fall all the way down to seven pence a share just to find buyers i think you'd be crazy to buy to be honest i honestly do i, I can't see any reason why mother care would suddenly turn this around uh and uh i i worry about the future of mother care i can see them being delisted off the mark i can see them going to be honest in not too long a period of time and i think uh the events of 2020 could well wipe them out now i'm not one for making predictions um i think the numbers are self-evident i don't even feel like i need to make a prediction really i think anyone watching this will probably be able to make their own minds up but i worry for the future of mother care to be honest but with that let's go and take a look at the leaderboard uh and see just how much of a car crash this actually is uh earnings per share zero there's no earnings they are not making money so there's no eps score uh no dividends since 2011 how could they they're not making any money they're making losses but they haven't pay, paid out a dividend since 2011 there's obviously no likelihood of that changing in the near future um and then when we look at the equity of the company against the outstanding shares to work out the equity uh per share score the equity is minus 49 million so you can't do that either so what this is essentially telling us if there's no earnings and the assets or the equities down at minus 49 million then the share price should be zero uh these are all metrics pointing towards this is not a company that really could have any value on that share price and so seven pence per share seems high <laughs> believe it or not um yeah not a fan they are not going to do well you probably guys these guys are not going to make it onto the leaderboard you probably guessed that judging by the, you know the caliber of the leaderboard these days and the fact that uh, not many not many of the losing companies are even making it on there mother care are one of the worst companies we've seen on this show they scored i'm not even going to do a card I'm not even going to waste my time on a card uh these guys scored minus 143 <laughs> and i don't think in the history of this show so far that we've seen a company that scored that badly um absolutely deserved i worry about the future of this company i generally do i genuinely do um having been in their store albeit a year and a half ago uh, i doubt much has changed if anything the numbers are looking worse than they did when i was last in a store uh and uh it just struck me as a dead company a company that's on its way out you know and these are the kind of numbers that we saw with thomas cook and companies like that uh during their decline we knew about thomas cook in 2010 
long before they actually closed down and all these media outlets and media reports of oh my god this company how did they close what happened we knew it about it in 2010 because all the numbers have been pointing to that direction for a long long time before their collapse mother care we've known about mother care since 2012 right i mean technically 2014 2015 you need a couple of years worth of decline just to notice there is a decline but even worst case scenario, since 2015, we've known that things are not going well at, at, at Mother Care. Looking at the share price, you can see that that's been falling since 2015 as well. That means other investors have not been have been less and less interested in these stocks and have not been buying them. And it's got to the point where they've fallen all the way down to seven pence a share. Um, some people will say, you know, are Mother Care a bargain at seven pence per share? No, for me, they're not. Uh, they just do not tick the boxes. For me, there's no obvious reason I can see as to why anything's going to necessarily change there. If you're a long-term investor, this is the polar opposite of what you want in your portfolio, unfortunately. Uh, and I feel bad for anybody, any of you guys watching this, that may well be an investor in mother care and have been holding on to it the whole way, hoping for some kind of resurgence. I don't see it coming. Uh, there may be some news or some sort of rumor floating across on its way about new investors and all this kind of stuff, the old Aston Martin style sort of thing. Until I see it in the actual numbers, I'm not interested at all. Uh, I need to see evidence of that, actual evidence, not just talk about it, not just ideas, not just this might happen, but it needs to be the numbers are now showing an increase and a resurgence in this company's fortunes. Until that happens, I'm not interested, and I honestly believe that Mother Care could be well be a casualty in 2020 and may well no longer be on the exchange. We'll wait and see. That is a prediction. I'm not a man of predictions, but I haven't seen a company doing this badly for a long time. So there you go. I'm not going to chuck them off the board. Waste of everybody's time. Uh, hope to see you guys in next week's episode. If you want to say hello, if you've got any comments on this particular company, please leave a comment below on the video. I reply to pretty much every single one that I can. Um, but yeah, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.